from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. From the Gospel of John. I don't need to tell you that we are living in a strange time. The days string together with an uncomfortable rhythm. But this may indeed be the only time in our life when we can imagine what it might have been like for to be those terrified disciples, to be locked in a room, living in fear, following the resurrection. And so today, I invite you to put yourself in that room. Imagine a room that is most likely not large. The windows are closed. It is warm. The light is dim. Imagine the events unfolding something like this. They have all heard from Mary about the resurrection of Jesus, and yet they do not go running to the tomb to see for themselves. They stay put in that locked room, afraid, grieving, waiting to see what happens next. And if Mary is telling the truth, there may have been even more reason to hide. After all, they ran from that violence last week. They were afraid. They were afraid that they would be crucified too. They did not stand with Jesus when he needed them. They were afraid. And we know what that fear is like. They cannot go back and they cannot go forward. They are frozen in time. And then there he is. And the greeting is this. Shalom. Peace be with you. Jesus, no doubt, knew that they were not planning or trying to decide how to carry out the legacy that they had lived together. Jesus knew they were afraid, and he knew that they were afraid of him. Still, he breathed new life into them, inviting them to receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. He forgave them for running. He allowed them to forgive themselves and each other. It is a powerful scene, one that is as much a part of the Easter story as any. John's Gospel was written during the, one of the more brutal times in the history of early Christianity. They doubted that the Roman persecution would end. Divisions between John's community and their Jewish relations left them doubting their own identity. They too were stuck in that in-between in space waiting. And for those early ones, the eyewitness accounts of Jesus' resurrection helped fuel what would come next for them. John's Gospel speaks to us, people like us, people like you and me, who often find ourselves believing and doubting at the same time. The people of John's community understood Thomas, who had not been in the room when Jesus came to their room that first time. Of course, the disciples told Thomas that they had seen Jesus, and he did not believe them. He wanted to see for himself. Eight days later, he got his chance. The disciples were still behind closed doors, fearing for their lives, and again, Jesus came speaking peace. He invited Thomas to touch his wounds, and immediately, Thomas was transformed from doubter to believer. Jesus understood what Thomas needed. He did not chastise him. He showed him. And in an early church, under great stress and suspicion, this story assured them that even in a house of doubt, Jesus enters bearing peace. 
Today, we find ourselves in what has been described by many as a liminal space, a place of transition. It feels like a waiting room between one point in time and the next. We have the feeling that we're just on the verge of something, but the only thing we know for sure is what we cannot do. We can't worship in the same room. We can't sing together. We can't welcome each other to, ta to the table. And so we wait, we dream, and we learn. We see what is going on around us. We see the disparity of wages and access to health care, the desperate need for protective supplies. We see jobs lost beyond anything we could have imagined, and the anxiety of how to feed a family without an income. This time challenges our faith and everything we thought we believed about our own safety. We can see ourselves in that room with those disciples. We can see it. We can see their fear and doubt. The question for us is this, how did they go beyond that room the first time? How did they become the disciples whose names we still honor today? How did they make a church that lived the way of love? How will we be changed by our experience? There will come a time, my friends, when this will all be over. I do not believe that we will be the same. And as hard as it is, I think we have to start the way Jesus did, with forgiveness. Forgiveness for the failed communications, forgiveness for the hoarding of supplies, forgiveness for not taking our well-being seriously. Then, we can take those selfless, heroic acts we read about every day and decode them and magnify them and live them. Then we can keep sharing resources without fear of the cost. Then we can protect our elders. Then we can help our earth continue to heal. And through it all, we can keep reaching out to each other as the body of Christ. I dream that we, the people of God, can breathe life into our world. We can become the ones who lead us away from the daily rancor and disagreements. We can do it because we have seen the suffering. We have seen it and we have had enough. We have seen the way it works when we value each other and live not as enemies, but peacemakers. That is the message of that dark, warm, locked room and those disciples who lived every moment in fear. They emerged, changed, and focused on the mission of building a life that was based on the way of Jesus, the way of love. We can be those same people. We have seen what it can be, we will remember those who serve us. We will remember that it is up to us. Franciscan sister and scientist Ilia Delio wrote this recently. Christianity can help us realize that death and resurrection are part of the evolutionary path toward wholeness letting go of isolated existence for the sake of a deeper union. Something dies, but something new is born, which is why the chaos of our times is in a strange way a sign of hope. Something new is being born within. Out of chaos, a star is born. Breakdown can be breakthrough if we recognize a new pattern of life struggling to emerge. That, my friends, is resurrection. Thanks be to God. Amen.